Hello again. I hope you're all well and keeping safe. It still seems a very strange time that we're living through, doesn't it? It's a bit like being on a roller coaster ride. Not being able to go out and about, as I have been so used to in the past, has been really difficult, as I know it has been for so many others. But I have certainly been able to relax more instead of the usual attempts at trying to fit everything into 24 hours. This gives me the opportunity of sitting in my front room to watch the world go by. And in fact, at this very moment in time, I'm watching a dad with his two to three year old daughter over in the school's empty car park. She's on her little pink bike and proud dad is busy taking pictures of her. Nearby is a pram with, I imagine, a very young baby tucked up inside, probably meaning that dad is giving mum a well-earned break. But more often, I see people walking past, many of whom, of course, are self-distancing, and it does seem strange to watch them walking apart. There are some couples, however, who walk close together, and certainly some of the older generation are either holding hands or linking arms. Some even have their dogs on long leads, as if they too have to observe self-distancing rules. And so the word walk came to mind as I was thinking about what to share with you today. Last week, I shared my thoughts about two of God's people that we read about in the Bible, Adam and Eve. And today, I have been thinking about Noah. In Genesis 6, verse 9, we read, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. He walked with God. For a lifetime, he walked step by step in faith with God. So strengthened by his faith as he walked with God, Noah was unable to do whatever God asked of him, like building an ark in preparation for the overwhelming flood that was to come. To most of his family, his friends and those around him, this was an outlandish idea. Certainly not to be considered either to be true, and certainly not a feasible, sensible project. But Noah knew without a doubt that this was exactly what God was telling him to do. We read that Moses encouraged the children of Israel to walk after God, and Abraham was said to walk before God. But only Noah, and I believe it was Enoch, was it said that they walked with God. To walk after God seems to imply a willingness to follow him wherever he may lead us. And immediately I recall the many pictures we see of sheep following their shepherd. And I remember saying just a couple of weeks ago how it was an image I have of, a, of the many pilgrimages to the Holy Land when I saw exactly that scene. A familiar scene, as this is the way of Middle Eastern shepherds. To follow someone so willingly like that, there must be surely a great sense of trust. Trust that your shepherd will lead you where it is safe to go. There are those beautiful reassuring words that we read in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I wonder how many times we hear Jesus saying to someone or to a group of people, come, follow me. Certainly, it was a call that some of the disciples heard, and they responded immediately. We hear the words that say, Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. To walk before God suggests that there is the firm conviction that you will never be left alone to find your own way, that he will never ever leave you. He will be there to protect you wherever you may travel. But to walk with God is to be constantly by his side. To be in such a close relationship with him that you will pray to him, talk to him, take your thoughts and anxieties to him, to him knowing he is ne that near to you wherever you may be, whatever situation in which you may find yourself. Knowing that he loves and cares for you and he walks with you as well. These words in the book of Proverbs 
are an appropriate reminder of how we should trust in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Some of you may remember hearing Mario Lanza singing a song from the very old film, The Student Prince. And it starts, I'll walk with God from this day on. His helping hand I'll lean upon. This is my prayer, my humble plea. May the Lord be ever with me. And it finishes with these lovely words. I'll never walk alone whilst I walk with God. So how would you describe your daily work, walk with God? Do you walk before him, after him, or with him? I'm sure that most of us would want to walk always with him. But sometimes, you know, when life is difficult or events seem to be so overwhelming, then as long as we follow or go before him, I'm absolutely convinced that God will understand and bring us back closer so that we will once more walk with him. God is our shelter and our strength always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not be afraid, even if the earth is shaken and mountains fall into the ocean depths. And I've taken those words from Psalm 46, and they must surely reassure us of God's presence always, his constant care, his love and his guidance. And so a moment of prayer. And these words are taken from the prayer written by St. Patrick. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger. Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. So let us finish by saying the words of the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So love and God bless you all. Amen.